Good morning, everybody. We are going to finish up talking about voltaic cells, galvanic cells, and batteries and that kind of stuff today. We're basically just going to go over the, um, the different problems that uh, we talked about last time, and we're going to solve them all today. All right, so make sure you guys have handed in your homework and you're ready to go. Um, so last time, this was kind of an example problem that I give you guys. And let's go back all the way before we get into the voltaic cell one. Let's get back to this redox problem and then we'll jump ahead and, and talk about the different voltaic cells and all that. So just say hi to me in the chat if you're with me. I see we got two people today, which is awesome. Um, and we'll probably have a couple more in a little bit. Who knows whether they'll be from my class or not. Anyway, so. Last time we kind of ran out of time, so we were talking about what happened to when potassium was added to water, but we didn't completely analyze it, so we're going to do that now. All right, so let's do that. Here we go. So um, let me see what was the, the next part of this was that we wanted to split it up into the ionic equation. So first the full ionic and then a net ionic. Remember, of course, that solids and liquids and gases don't get split up. So in this problem, we actually don't have a lot to change here for your ionic equation. So that's, it's a little bit different from the ones before it, right? And so this is simply gonna be the same on the left side, right? Because we're not gonna split up. You might be tempted to split up water, but you shouldn't because water here is not an ionic compound. It's a covalent compound, it's a liquid, and we're not going to split that up. All right, we're only going to split up things that are aqueous. So this one should look like this. So it's going to be 2KS no change here plus 2H2O liquid no change there. If you don't know cursive, by the way, that's a, um, a cursive L. All right, and you have H2, which is a gas. Also, we're not going to split that up. The only one that gets split up is this one, which is 2K plus AQ plus what? 2OH minus the polyatomic ion hydroxide. And that potassium hydroxide gets split up into that. All right, and notice now, because of this situation, we don't have any spectator ions, right? So potassium and potassium plus, that changes, right? We have water, and there's no water over here, and then we have H2 gas and OH minus, so there is no spectator ion in this case. So let's actually state that in the red, All right? So no spectator ions. All right. Um, and so since there's no spectator ions, we don't need to write out the net ionic equation because the net ionic equation is the same as the full ionic equation and we're good with that. But we do kind of want to split this up. Now that we have this ionic equation, we want to split it up into the oxidation and reduction and see what's going on there. Um, so the first one is going to be the potassium, at least that's what I would write down first, and that's kind of the, the easiest one to see what's going on there, right? So you have potassium metal going to potassium ions, and it's losing an electron. And so you don't have to write, you can write two or you can write one, I'm just going to write one. So K S goes to K plus AQ plus one electron, right? That is the half reaction for that. And then everything else has got to be the other half reaction. And you have two waters. So we have two H2O right here. Two H2O liquid. And um, let's, let's hold out on the electrons first and just give them a little bit of space here. Okay, so two waters. And then they're going to go to what? H2 gas plus 2OH minus AQ. Now, you might be wondering, well, this is not your standard, 
you know, element goes to an element with the charge thing. And so it's not exactly clear well, how many electrons are being transferred, how many electrons are being gained or lost. So this one's a little bit trickier like that. And there's a couple ways you could do it. The easiest way is to simply look at the charges. And so we have an overall charge here of zero, and we have an overall charge here of what? Of negative two. Negative two. Negative one here, but there's two hydroxides, so this is negative two per reaction. So what we should do is over here, we're going to do plus two E minus. And if you didn't know that, you probably could figure it out by looking back at this table because the table tells you the whole thing right there. So you go back over here and it looks like, all right, two H2O plus two E minus goes to two H, uh, H2 plus two OH minus. Oh, that's exactly what we wrote right here. And so you can sometimes do that. If you can't figure it out, you can sometimes just go back to the table and look at that. All right. Hey, Nevaeh. Yes, long time no see. You're awake this morning. That's awesome. It's great. Um, all right. So you can just basically look back at the table sometimes and figure it out that way. All right. Now, um, which one's oxidation, which one's reduction? By now, that should be old hat and very easy for us. All right. So we look at this. The potassium is losing an electron. Losing electrons is oxidation, right? Leo says Gur. Leo, you with us this morning? All right. Leo says Gur. So this is oxidation. All right. Last week of school for someone. Um, well, I think we still have a few a few weeks. The, we're not, we're not, our last week is until the, I think our last week is the first week in June. I think that's right. So we have this week, next week, and the week after. So that's what, you know, two and a half weeks. All right. So this is oxidation because potassium's losing an electron. Water here is gaining two electrons, right? And so because water is gaining two electrons, this is going to be reduction. All right. So how many more tests are we going to have? Um, good question. I think um, the answer is going to be zero, but we're going to have two more quizzes, okay? Oh, last week for seniors, I almost forgot you're a senior. Shoot, and I don't know if I have any other seniors. Let me see. Do I have any other? Oh, I do. Lauren's also a senior in my other chemistry class. Thanks for reminding me. That means you guys are, are literally done. So I need, to, <laughs> I need to make sure that I just stop your grading after this week. So Jonathan, that means the last grade that you'll have would be the quiz. Um, that's, that's unfortunate. You're going to miss out on our nuclear unit. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. So learn about nuclear stuff yourself, Jonathan. Um, or you're, you're welcome to follow along if you want to. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway. So where was I? Where was I? Back over here. All right. Oh, question on quizzes. So we're going to have a quiz on this stuff on Friday. And then we're going to have a quiz on nuclear sometime later, probably, you know, either the end of next week or the next, the following week. And, and then you're going to have a little project that you're going to work on doing some research on nuclear power. And I don't expect to give you guys any more tests, just two more quizzes, one quiz on this stuff and one quiz on nuclear. Okay. Because we're not really going to spend the time to really get, um, you know, to, to do enough time to you know really work on having any more test. All right. So there we go. All right, what's left? I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, we need to get the voltage of these, right? And so in order to get the voltage, we need to look at the different reactions. So we have the potassium reaction, and we find potassium. Potassium is way down here at the bottom, right? And that's because potassium really, really is an unstable metal, right? And so it very easily oxidizes. And we notice that this here is the reduction of potassium, but we have the oxidation. So we need to take this and flip it. And when you take it and flip it, the voltage is also flipped. And so this should be a voltage of, for this um, half reaction, it's going to be, where was it? Positive. 
2.92 volts. And then for this half, it's going to be, let me see, the water, which is down here, the reduction of water is a negative number. And this is exactly like this, so it's not being flipped. And that's going to be a negative 0 0.83 volts, exactly like it has it in there. Oops, and make sure you guys can see that. All right, so this is negative because it's exactly the way you have it here, and we just wrote down the number. This originally came from a negative number, but we flipped it because the reaction was flipped, and so that became positive, All right? So we just go ahead and add those two numbers, All right? So that's gonna be 2.92 plus a negative, so minus 0.83, and that's gonna be 2.09 volts. So our total voltage for the reaction is going to be 2.92 volts. Now, in reality, you can't. Um, so hold up for a second. So I'm, I'll answer your second. In a, uh, your, I'll answer your question in a second, Natanya. Um, so in reality, I just want to say that these voltages are not exact voltages for the reactions because the reactions are not ever going to be done in standard. What's known as standard conditions. When you make a battery, you can make the battery be in standard conditions. So I'm just writing this down as kind of the voltage for this reaction would be approximately this. Now it's not going to be exactly this because like I said, typically this, these reactions are done in non-standard conditions. All right. So we're just kind of making some approximations. And then once we talk about the batteries, then we can talk about exact numbers for voltages because we have them set up in very precise ways. Now, I think that's everything for this homework, let me come back to the comment section. Are you still polling on ending early? Um, are, am I still planning on ending early? I don't know what you mean by ending early. I don't think I ever said that I would end early. So this is kind of the plan um, of what I'm going to be doing in terms of the rest of the year. So this week, so this Friday, we're gonna we're ending this. So this is the last stuff we're doing on electricity. We don't have more time to do it. So we're gonna have our quiz on voltaic cells and redox on Friday. And then on Monday, I don't think we have school. Tuesday, we're gonna start nuclear. And this is the way it's gonna work for nuclear. So nuclear, I'm gonna take a couple days to talk about things like alpha, beta, gamma, and um, fission and fusion and that kind of stuff, um, and maybe a little bit about um, nuclear power and, and nuclear weapons and that kind of stuff. Um, and so I'll be teaching next week on that, and then we'll probably have a quiz, I don't know, depending on how it's gonna fit, either next Friday or the following Monday. Um, and then I'm also going to assign you a project to do. So the, the last week of school, um, which is, I think, the first week in June. I'm not going to be teaching, but you will have a project to do. If you want to do like, you know, a couple hours of work on that project and then just finish it up and turn it in early, you're welcome to. But it's not going to be due until the last day of school, and I will be available to answer questions on that project that whole last week of school. But we're not going to be doing any new lessons the last week of school. It's just going to be time for you guys to work on your projects. Okay? So I hope that makes some sense. Um, so it, if you do a lot of work at the beginning, um, you can finish early, but there's no need to finish early if you understand what I'm saying. All right. So any other questions before we jump into the voltaic cells? All right, why is E total? Oh, because I wrote it down wrong. Thank you. Good point. Right. So we calculated as 2.09, and then for some odd reason, I wrote down that. Good call. 2.09 volts, right? 2.92 minus 0.83, that should be 2.09 volts. Sorry about that. There you go. Thank you for paying attention, Jonathan. There we go. Any other questions? All right. Clarify. This is 2.92 minus 
equals 2.09. 0.8, if I could write. Okay, so any other questions? If not, let's go right into the voltaic cells, um, and then that's going to be it. So you can expect for your test, so this part is mostly, this homework was mostly a preparation for the voltaic cells, kind of a, a review of what's going on um, in terms of redox reactions, and then the voltaic cells is their application. And so expect your quiz essentially to be like one of these problems where you need to essentially figure out everything about a voltaic cell and then, you know, go on from there, right? So let's go ahead and just jump into um, questions one and two, which are the same kind of question, but they are different actual materials there, all right? So the approach here because unlike the previous situation, we don't know what necessarily which one's oxidized and which one's reduced until we figure it out based on where they are on the table, right? Um, in the previous one, I said, okay, A, for example, I said, okay, so aluminum metal is added to nickel two nitrate, and I said a reaction happens, so you know, since it's a single replacement, that aluminum's gonna be oxidized and nickel is gonna be reduced, simply because we start off with aluminum as a metal. But when you have one of these situations, you don't know that right away, right? All you know um, is that you have nickel could be oxidized or reduced and silver could be oxidized or reduced. And you need to find them on the table in order to figure out which is which. So let's go ahead and, and just draw the voltaic cell and then we'll go through all these. So I know it's, it's a bit, it's, a, it's quite a bit of, you know, A, B, you know, a lot of parts to each of these problems, but let's just go ahead and do it. And I want you guys to be able to uh, to draw these things to kind of make some sense of what's actually happening. So let's just say, okay, so we got beaker one, and we'll put beaker two right over here, right next to it. And then in each of these beakers, we need to have a salt bridge, or there could be a porous disc, but we didn't really talk about that. So we'll just put our salt bridge here, and let me label that. That's our salt bridge, right? And we're going to have a, an electrode in each one. So this is going to be a nickel electrode. It is possible to have a non-reactive electrode, like a carbon electrode or a platinum electrode. Um, and in that case, those electrodes wouldn't actually be oxidized. So you don't necessarily have to have exactly connectivity issues. All right, sorry about that. Looks like we had some connectivity issues. All right, so we have a nickel metal electrode. This is an electrode right here. And we have in the solution, we know it's nickel two nitrate. And I know that because of this two here. So it's gonna be Ni2 plus. And I already know that that nitrate is my spectator ion. This is this nitrate spectator ion, so I don't care about that. So we have a nickel two ions in solution. We have, in this solution, we have silver one ions and we have a silver electrode. All right, and then we of course have a wire and then some kind of device that we're going to power up, whatever it is, I'm going to power up a light bulb and there we go that is my diagram for that um, voltaic cell all right now let's analyze the voltaic cell write out which will be oxidized and which will be reduced so we don't know yet so what do we got to do we got to find everything on the table we have nickel and we have silver right so let's first find nickel um, and we said where's nickel mark them here so we can find them. Um, where is nickel? Right here. So there's nickel and then silver is way at the top. Okay and in general we can say that the higher one, so you compare the two, whichever one is higher will be the one that's reduced and the one that's reduced will have this exact reaction and the one that's lower will be oxidized and it will have the flipped reaction. So let's go ahead and write those down. So we already know just based on the fact that silver is higher, silver is going to be reduced and nickel will be oxidized. All right, so nickel 
This is the oxidation and silver is the reduction. All right, and we already know also, let's even skip over here because anox red cat, so reduction occurs at the cathode. So that's, so reduction, that means the silver metal. So specifically speaking, this silver metal here is the cathode, all right? It's not the whole thing, just this, the electrode, that piece of metal is the cathode, all right? So just that piece of metal is the cathode because that's where reduction takes place. And the nickel here, that's gonna be the anode, right? We know that that piece of metal, that nickel piece of metal is the anode because, right, um, that an, the anode is where oxidation occurs, reduction occurs at the cathode. So anox red cat, help us remember that. But of course, you guys are just doing your tests as um, open notes, so you're not going to need to memorize any of that stuff. But your online, your open notes tests, quizzes are timed, which is why you actually should, you know, be studying for things. Which is why I take off points when you turn in your tests late, right? Because it means that you didn't prepare enough, um, and you had to go do the studying and go look up everything during the test. So that's kind of what I my my theory behind this whole time limit situation here. But anyway, um, back onto the problem. So that's my anode, that's my cathode, this is where oxidation occurs, this is where reduction occurs, all right? And keep in mind that the anode and the cathode are the pieces of metal, they are the electrodes, not the whole thing. All right, next up, hopefully you guys can see that nice and clearly. Um, so let's go ahead and write out the half reactions. You don't need to guess what they are. You can just go look at your table, right? And so we said nickel is the oxidation, so it's going to be opposite of this. So it's going to be nickel going to Ni2 plus plus two electrons, and that's going to be a positive 0.2 volts because this is negative 0.25 volts. So this is um, Ni, and I'm not even going to put the states in here, going to... Ni2 plus plus two electrons. And we said that that is the oxidation half. And because we flipped it, that's going to be a positive 0.25 volts. Okay? And then over here, the reduction, you can find that right here on your table two. That's silver plus an electron to make silver. And that's going to be a positive 0.8 volts. And it's exactly like that reaction, not flipped. And so it still should be positive 0.8 volts. So that is a G plus um, one electron, a, sorry, a G plus plus one electron goes to a G. And we said that's the reduction of silver is based on the table 0.8 volts. Okay, so let's see what I've done so far. So we've got, we've labeled that, we got the half reactions, indicate which side is the, we did that, indicate the direction. Okay, so the direction the electrons are moving, well the electrons are going to be moving um, always from the anode to the cathode. Okay, why is that? Because the nickel is losing electrons, so the electrons are literally coming from the nickel. Okay, not figuratively, but they're literally coming from the nickel from this electrode. So they're going to come out of here and they're going to move this direction. Okay, and they're going to flow all the way over here. The electrons are going to flow all the way over here until the silver gets it. The silver ions will literally flow through the solution until they touch the electrode and then they'll get an electron that came from nickel and they'll turn into silver metal and they'll coat this and they'll make a greater amount of silver right there. Okay, so the electrons are going that direction. Let's see, number, or letter F, write the balanced net ionic equation. How many electrons move per equation? Well, we can see right here that, and, and this, I don't know if I really mentioned this before, but we can see right away when we look at this, okay, because we've already taken away our spectator ions, right? When we look at this, the nickel loses two electrons and the silver gains one. Now, the electrons must be balanced. 
Okay, so if nickel gains two electron, or if nickel loses two electrons and silver gains one electron, what happens to the other electron? Well, of course, the other electron must be gained by another silver, which means that this reaction must happen two times for every one time that this half reaction happens. Okay, so when we write our balanced net ionic equation, it's going to look like this. You can have nickel on the left side, and if you want to write down your S, you can, but, you know, state's not terribly important right now, okay? Um, nickel plus two silvers, two AG plus we're not going to write the electrons down for two reasons, okay? The electrons, we don't, well, actually, really for one reason. Um, the electrons, we're not going to be ever writing down electrons. That's not really a reason, okay? So you could take that as reason one. But we never write electrons down in an ionic equation. But more importantly, why not? Because you can have two electrons here and two electrons there. So two electrons on both sides of the equation. So therefore, that would be balanced, and you're not going to have them written down. So we don't write the electrons down. Okay? Not that they're spectators, they're not, they're just electrons, and we don't write down electrons in chemical reactions, only in half reactions. Okay, so we have 2Ag plus, um, um, and that's it. Now for the product side, it's going to be Ni2 plus, plus, we have to have 2Ag, and we can go ahead and put a solid there. You can put solids or you can put AQs on there if you wanted to. But, um, but that's it. That is your balanced net ionic equation. Last of all, what is the, um, the value of the standard potential of the cell? And that's going to be, we're just going to add these, we're literally just going to add these two together. Okay? And so E cell, and this, this little degree sign actually means that it's standard, standard conditions. And we're not going to worry too much about standard conditions, but standard conditions mean it's at 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure, and one mole per liter of each of those solutions. So one mole per liter nickel to nitrate, one mole per liter silver nitrate, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's what this means. It means the standard. So our standard cell potential for this battery or this voltaic cell is 0 0.8 plus 0.25 or 1.05 volts. All right, and that's it. I think we did everything there for that problem, right? Okay, so I think we're going to actually run over today, and if you have a class and you got to go, whatever, that's fine, but I, I'm going to need time for this one and the back page, but I'm just going to finish it up, okay? And if you have to go early, then that's fine. All right, so next problem, um, and we had a question here. How can you determine the coefficients from the half reactions? You determine the coefficients simply from this. Um, so you get the, the, these half reactions come, wait, so I, I think what you're asking is about the coefficients here, right? When you have the net ionic equation, but the coefficients on the half reactions, they're gonna be exactly whatever you have here. So, so you just basically write, yeah, you, you copy down the half reaction, um, which is going to be either exactly like this or flipped. All right, so once you have the half reaction, how do you combine them together? And that's the key as you, you look at the number of electrons you have, okay? If the number of electrons is the same, then you don't change them. You just combine them together and boom, that's it, okay? But if they're different like they are here, this one's two, this one's one, then you have to somehow balance the electrons by multiplying by some kind of whole number. So in this case, we just multiplied this whole half reaction by two. And if you want to write it out, you can. So that's going to look like this. It's going to look like 2Ag plus plus 2E minus goes to 2Ag like that. And then you just take this. So now they have exactly the same number of electrons and you just add them together, right? So you put all the reactants together and you put all the products together and you're going to end up with this net ionic equation right here. Right, so this is your net ionic equation. Okay, and again we don't need to write down the electrons because they will be balanced. Um, so basically both half reactions need to have equal amounts of electrons. Yes, exactly. As long as they have equal amounts of electrons you just combine them together and that's it. All right. 
Um, and then this one, so the next one, number two, is gonna be even a little bit worse in terms of balancing, but let's go ahead and do that one so you guys can see it. So you're gonna get a look of, of if each of these. Neither of these is easy in terms of balancing. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so you have nickel and you have aluminum and you have exactly the same kind of situation. Um, and I'm, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna redraw it, but it's gonna look exactly the same, except now you have aluminum, metal, and keep in mind this aluminum, when it's in aluminum nitrate is Al3+, plus, Al3+, plus ions, okay? So I wanted you to draw it again just so you had practice drawing it, but let's just jump into the reactions. So nickel, we already know um, what kind of reaction nickel does. Let's look up aluminum on here, and we have too much going on. Unfortunately, I don't have an eraser. Yeah, no eraser. So anyway, so here is my nickel. Let's start because this is, the, again, what we're doing. And then we have aluminum. Find aluminum. Aluminum's way down here. Aluminum's a, a highly reactive metal. It's incredible that you can have solid aluminum and it doesn't rust, it doesn't do anything. And the reason for that is aluminum metal has a, a very, very strong outer oxide layer, aluminum oxide, um, which is protecting the metal on the inside. So even though it, m aluminum is a highly reactive metal, it doesn't actually rust or anything. Okay, so we notice that aluminum is lower and nickel is higher, which means in this case, nickel is reduced and aluminum is oxidized. So what does that mean? That means this nickel reaction is gonna occur exactly the way it is and the aluminum re reaction is gonna be flipped from what you see here, okay? So now nickel is going to be your reduction. So this is where your reduction takes place, and this is where your oxidation takes place, okay? Which means that the nickel electrode, so nickel electrode is going to be your cathode, and the aluminum, aluminum is gonna be your anode, okay? And so here's, I, I specifically chose these so you guys could see that one you know, particular mixture or one particular metal can sometimes be where oxidation occurs or it could sometimes be reduction occurs depending on what you pair it with, right? Everything here is relative. And um, in this case, in the top case, nickel is um, lower down than silver, but in this case, nickel is higher up than aluminum. Okay, so aluminum's the anode in this case, and nickel is the cathode in this case. All right, and we can go ahead <clears throat> and write out our half reactions. Now we have nickel, which is being reduced, so Ni2 plus plus two electrons to make nickel metal and over here we have aluminum <clears throat> metal which is being oxidized and going to aluminum three plus and because it's three plus we're gonna have three three electrons here okay so these are the half reactions that occur, and let's go ahead and do the voltage right now before we do anything else. So the voltage of, of this one is for reduction of nickel, um, and we said that was, um, in this case it was positive 0.25 volts, and in this case it's going to be negative 0.25 volts because this is exactly the way it appears on the table, right? So nickel plus two electrons to make nickel metal, that's gonna be a negative 0.25 volts, right? We did not flip it. And aluminum, aluminum, however, is flipped, right? So this is the reduction of aluminum, but we're oxidizing it, so it gets flipped. So it's gonna be a positive 1.66. So your 
oxidation is a positive 1.66 volts. And so let's go ahead and just calculate the total voltage. So that total voltage is going to be E, we call that, you can say E total if you want, or E cell because it's a voltaic cell, or however you want to say it. And we're just going to add them together. So that's going to be what? It's going to be um, 1.66 minus 0.25, which is 1.41 volts. 1.41 volts. All right. Now, I think we have not done the net ionic equation yet. And notice that these two amounts of electrons are not equal, which makes this a little bit more of a pain to do. And not only are they not equal, you can't simply just multiply one of them by two. We need to change them both. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this reaction by three and we're going to multiply this reaction by two. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So that'll give us the same number of electrons on both sides. So the overall net ionic equation is going to look like this. So we're going to have 3 times this. So it's going to be 3Ni2 plus, plus 6 electrons. But you're going to have 6 electrons on both sides. So we're not going to write down the electrons. So we have 3 nickels plus 2 aluminums plus 2Al solid. And they're going to make what? They're going to make 3 nickels solid plus 2 aluminum. 2Al3+. plus. Notice also, everyone, notice this, that the charge is balanced too. Okay? So on the left side, we have 3 times a 2 plus, so this is a 6 plus charge. And here we have a 2 times 3 plus, or a 6 plus charge. And that should be true too, OK? So our charge is balanced here, and our metals, our, our elements are balanced. And so this is our net on ionic equation. All right, is there anything else? Um, we're going to say, OK, the electrons, I didn't draw the thing. I haven't drawn the thing. But the electrons are always going to go from the anode to the cathode. So um, I don't know even where to write that. So, so my answer for E is electrons always move from anode to cathode. All right. And so if you had this drawn here and you had the nickel on the left and the aluminum on the right, in that case, the electrons would move from right over to the left. All right. Now, is there anything else that I missed here? I think that's everything, isn't it? Mm, just read through this real quick. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So I'm pretty sure we're done on this part. All right. Expect on your quiz, it shouldn't be a surprise. I'm just going to give you a problem like this. Now, the elements are all going to be different. You know, the reactions are going to be different. But expect something like this. And that's going to be your quiz. OK, so one of these voltaic cells. And I do expect you to be able to draw it. OK, but it should be so easy because you can just look off of one of my drawings or look off of some other drawing. OK, um, don't forget a salt bridge. If you draw the thing and get all sloppy and be like, don't feel like putting the salt bridge in. Well, guess what? That's wrong because without the salt bridge, it won't work. Why? Because the salt bridge balances the ions. Let me just talk about that briefly before I get on to the next question here. Um, what happens in this reaction? Let's go back to number one and just talk about what actually happens in this reaction before we solve the next one. OK, so let's just talk about one reaction at a time. First, what happens is one of the nickel atoms, one of the nickel atoms in this electrode loses two electrons. And those electrons go this way. And that nickel atom, after it loses two electrons, goes into the solution. OK, after that nickel atom goes into the solution, our solution has an overall positive charge. Well, that it can't keep that up forever. OK, very, very quickly, you're going to have an overall positive charge in the solution. And that's not going to work. OK, and, and the same thing is going to happen over here. As these electrons go over here and these 
silver ions get stuck onto the electrode. They suck up electrons, get onto the electrode. You're going to have an overall negative charge in the solution over here. And that's not going to work. Okay, so you're going to build up negative charge here. You're going to build up positive charge here. So there needs to be some kind of balance of charge. And what a salt bridge is, it can be made from sodium chloride. It can be made from, you know, really any kind of salts that don't actually react with these chemicals. And what happens is, typically, you can have some chloride ions from the sodium chloride salt bridge can come down in here in the solution. Or, and, and not, probably not or, but also at the same time, these nickel two ions can go up into the salt bridge and slowly migrate this direction. And what you can have is as the, the silver ions go into um, or become reduced, then you can have some sodium positive ions from the salt bridge come down into the solution to balance the charge. Okay, so you can have this movement of ions through the salt bridge, right? That's not a conduction of electricity. The electrons all flow through the wire, but the salt bridge is here just to balance the ions. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the last question. I hope you guys make some sense of what that salt bridge is actually doing. It's too bad we don't get a chance to make this, but if you do take AP Chemistry and if coronavirus isn't a huge issue and we actually go to real school next year, um, then we'll get to make salt bridges and get to make these things in AP Chemistry. But, you know, who knows? All right, so I know my time's up, but I'm still going to go ahead and solve this problem. So if you have to go to some you know, Zoom meeting or whatever, go ahead and do that. And then you can come back and re watch the rest of this later. So this is an AP, uh, a previous year's AP problem. And it did actually have another part to it, which was beyond the scope of this course. Um, but all this stuff is stuff that you guys should be able to answer. It's the same kind of stuff, but is asked in a different way. And I, I want to do that just to have a different kind of problem here too. So let's do it. It's a little bit of a kind of a, just trying to figure out what's what's going on here. So it's it's neat. So we have an electrochemical cell constructed with an open switch. So that the switch is completely irrelevant to the problem. All right. Um, as shown in the diagram, so if a strip of SN, that's tin, if you guys remember, uh, a strip of tin and a strip of an unknown metal. Ooh, a little mystery. A mystery metal, right? A metal X. That's cool. Um, maybe it's adamantium. I don't know. No, it's not. Um, it's so used for electrodes. When the switch is closed, the basically, um, space, that, that's kind of a dumb wording here. When the switch is closed, basically when this thing is turned on, okay? Question here. In a battery, is the anode positive? Okay, so it all depends on whether you're charging the battery or whether you are using it in a normal way. But if you're talking about a battery like, like we have here, so using an, a voltaic cell, um, and I'll come back to this question in, here in a second, but if you have a voltaic cell, the, you're asking about what? The anode. So the anode is going to be negative here, right? Because the anode is where the electrons are coming from. So this is going to have a negative charge, and this is where the electrons are going. So that's going to be a positive charge, right? Now, if you're charging it, it's going to be flipped. So the anode and cathode are sometimes positive, sometimes negative, which is why I really find the, the positive and negative symbols to be pretty much unimportant because they flip. So anodes are sometimes positive and sometimes negative, just depending on the situation. But anyway, back over here, um, we have, let's, let's go through this problem. So we have a switch is closed, which essentially is when this is turned on, right? The mass of the SN electrode increases. Very important wording here, okay? So the whole switch is unimportant, but here this is super important. The mass of the SN electrode increases. What does that tell us? That tells us that tin is being reduced, right? Because that's the mass here is increasing, which means that the tin is going from solution and sticking onto the electrode. It's going from SN2 plus to SN, right? And so it's sticking onto the electrode. So we know that the tin is going to be the thing that's being reduced. All right. So label the electrode that is the cathode. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, let's, let's do this in order of what we know. First, we know that tin is 
reduced because it's um, gaining mass. All right, and if tin is gaining mass, is if it's being reduced, we know that reduction, so red cat, reduction occurs at the cathode, right? So that means tin is your cathode. So label the electrode that is the cathode. So let's go ahead and do that. So tin is our cathode, right there. All right, and that's our justification. I'm not going to write out all the words that I would write if I was taking the test, but the justification is because tin is gaining mass, therefore tin must be being reduced, and reduction occurs at the cathode, so that's the cathode, which means that metal X is the anode. All right. In the diagram above, draw an arrow indicating the direction of electron flow. The electrons always go from the anode to the cathode. Okay, so electrons are going this direction. Okay. All right. Next up. If the standard cell, E cell, is equal to 0.6 volts, well, what is the standard potential in volts for that? Okay. So, we have... Um, we have these two different, let's actually go up here, all right? And what we're going to do is, we're going to say, actually, you know what, I'm going to go here, because we know what tin is doing. So tin plus 2e minus is going to Sn, right? And it, while this occurs, so this is your reduction, the oxidation occurs, must be x is going to x. 3 plus plus 3 electrons, right? And um, if this is got 0.6 volts, if that's 0.6 volts, and our total, I'm sorry, I, label, I labeled that wrong. If this first reaction is negative 0.14 volts, and our E cell, so our total, is going to be 0.6 volts. Well, we want to know what is this. So th what plus 0.14 is going to be 0.6. And so we know that that's going to be something that's going to be a positive 0.74 volts, right? 0.74 minus 0.14 is going to be 0.6. But this is the oxidation of X. So therefore, your E, your standard reduction potential of X, must therefore be a negative 0 0.74 volts, okay? Which means now we can go ahead and look up on this diagram or on here, well, what is that? We can just go over here and find, okay, negative 0.74. Oh, that's chromium. Negative 0.74 is chromium, so we know X is chromium. Okay? Pretty cool, huh? So we figured out that that was chromium based on this. So a lot of, you know, worrying about positives and negatives here, but, but um, at the end of the day, you should come up with chromium. So write a balanced net ionic equation. Um, once you figure out that that's chromium, the net ionic equation is going to be pretty easy, pretty straightforward for you, okay? So X is chromium, and once again, well, we've got to multiply everything through to balance our electrons. So once again, just like our nickel aluminum battery, we're going to multiply this side by 3 and this side by 2. So that's going to get us 3. Let me just write out half reactions here because this one doesn't even have chromium. So let's go and do this. So 3 S N 2 plus plus 6 electrons goes to 3Sn. And then the oxidation is going to be 2. So we've got to multiply that by 2. So 2 chromium goes to 2 chromium 3 plus plus 6 electrons. Notice that the electrons are going to be the same on both sides. So we don't need to write them. 
and then we just write down our reactants. So that's going to be 3S, 3SN2+, plus, plus 2CR, and they're going to make what? They're going to make 3SN, I keep on making a small s, 3SN solid, plus 2 CR3 plus. And that's going to be your balanced net ionic equation. Notice that our charges are going to be the same on both sides. 2 times 3 is 6 plus. 3 times 2 is 6 plus. And we have 3 tins and 2 chromiums on both sides. So that's it. But um, next class, we're going to have a quiz on this. So there's no review. I already told you what's going to be on here. It's going to be a problem involving a voltaic cell you got to write out the cell, draw the cell, all that kind of stuff, and solve for these things. So any questions at all? Any questions, guys? Okay. So, no questions. Cool. Well, if there's no questions, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at that. And hopefully you guys enjoy learning about batteries and voltaic cells. And you can make some sense of all that kind of stuff. See you guys on Friday. Um, we're just going to have the quiz on Friday. No live stream on Friday. And we will start on next Tuesday, start talking about nuclear stuff. All right. See you guys. Have a great rest of your, of your day. Still a little bit left of the morning.